back in, I think it was the end of August of this year, I heard about the Independent Mind Project, which was um, funded by Creative Scotland in conjunction with the Burns Heritage. And Hannah from the Burns Heritage had also made contact with some of my colleagues and was trying to spread the word about the Independent Mind Project, which was about working with people who had either mental health problems or addiction issues. Um, um, and when I got in touch with Hannah, I muted the idea to her about having some sort of drama performance and very quickly she was very enthusiastic about that and we thought that it would be a great idea to incorporate that into the day of the Christmas Fair which will be held in December. We had um, a big open event to invite the various different charities to come to the museum and see if they'd like to be involved in this project. Claire um, Muir was kind enough to come along and join in and she was the person that suggested if we perhaps join in with her vision for initially a very small play for part of their town hall production for their recovery airfare. The funding for the pantomime has come about from the, primarily from the independent um, mind project with Creative Scotland and the Burns Heritage. Um, we've been able to access people um, to be able to help with the, with the running of the pantomime, with the script writing and also the directing and the production of the uh, pantomime. But it, and, um, as well as that, we've had uh, input from the Alcohol and Drug Partnership who are very much supporting all of the recovery aid activities and they've also helped with some of the funding opportunities that we needed to be able to run the pantomime. This pot of money has been given us for two years, so this is the first project we're endeavouring to complete and we'll go over the next two years working with lots of different groups with lots of different people and get them to hopefully see our museum as a different way and as a different resource and very necessary and relevant to them. I think a lot of people presume that museums are for a certain person in society when it's really a place for everyone to come and to see what fabulous things we have and the museum really does have that at its very heart. Robert Burns was definitely a man of the people and a man of the people in Ayrshire and those are the people that should be coming and visiting us and really engaging with him in his work. The Burns Museum had um, sort of arranged these uh, two or three different kind of projects and this was one of them. So the, the Recovery Year folk and the Burns Museum contacted myself to see if I would be interested in putting together and writing a, a pantomime with a kind of Burnsy sort of theme to it. I had this idea where, well, why don't we take uh, the end of the Tam O'Shanter poem as being the kind of starting point of the play? So, Tam O'Shanter, the morning after, you know, Tam hung over and getting a tongue lashing for his wife Kate and um, just telling the story of uh, how they kind of, um, the, 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 the wife and, and her pals have had enough of Tam's drinking. Here you go, what about this? My God, Tam, this stuff must be 100% proof, it's like pure malt whiskey. I don't care about pure malt, but it, it's pure piss right enough. I was approached by Hannah Teasdale, um, who works for the Burns Museum, and um, asked me if I'd be interested in um, having a meeting with them. So I came up and met with herself, with Claire from Recovery Air, and also with Rab, with Wilson, the writer. Um, they spoke about what they needed, and I felt it was something that I could, I could bring a lot to the group uh, with my experience, um, with my ideas, and also knowing that I had to keep it fun. The pantomime is following the story of Tamashanta, but it's not the Tamashanta that we all know, it's the Tamashanta the morning after. So Tam wakes up with his hangover and he's telling his wife Kate all about what happened the night before, how he met all the witches and the devils and they're all dancing in the kirk. But actually, as it turns out, it wasn't the witches and it wasn't the devil, it was just a big ploy or a big plot by his wife to try and wean him off of the drink. Um, and it was written by Rab Wilson, who um, brilliantly managed to write it so that it's funny for adults and kids and people that know Burns will understand and get some of the reference and people that might not know Burns that well. And I think it's something that people of all ages will really enjoy. These, are, these activities such as the recovery or stuff that we're doing and in particular the drama performance of the pantomime is so important for our service users. Some of the people who were involved, um, when I first got in contact with them and asked them if they would be interested in doing the pantomime, 
they were shy about that, you know, the confidence is a big issue for some of our, our clients, our service users, and, and also, you know, they're anxious about coming into um, situations with their friends, let alone coming into situations with a big group of people who they don't know. And so an opportunity like this has very much broadened their horizons and given them that opportunity to mix in with people maybe that they wouldn't normally have been mixing in with, but also to experience things that maybe they've enjoyed in the past or maybe they've never ever experienced before. And so it's about opening up new horizons and um, allowing them to experience new opportunities. And from that, I think it's evident from the week by week sessions that we've had in preparation for the pantomime about people's confidence growing. You know, some people would be sitting quiet in the first couple of weeks and then they begin to talk more and to open up and then the, the introducing the use of humour and then learning their lines and being confident and even to the point where, you know, they're quite comfortable with us having a laugh about the parts that they've been cast in the pantomime and that really shows that their confidence is growing and then in turn I think their mood, um, you know, people's mental health is improving as a, as a direct result of being here every week. I think we should stop your nagging and geese a break. Geese a break? Geese a break? Us women are fed up with us, you and men get out and do it every weekend. But us women by the hand, mark in the glaze, wash the dinners. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it, it was great. It was great meeting up every week and, and going over the lines and we had a laugh as well. Uh, during it and it was good um, getting to know everybody that was involved in it. I really enjoyed it. I think you get so caught up in the part, you know, that, you know, you, you know, you're not really conscious, you know, like of actually being on a stage, you know, like you just, I don't know, it just, it just becomes so much part of you, you know, acting this, out this part, you know, that you're not really all that conscious and it, it was fantastic I think working with the others you know because they were terrific you know. The rehearsal process was quite terrifying actually because when you're reading lines it's bad enough and trying to remember them obviously the more you rem remember them the better and also learning the Scottish language at the same time which I'd never done before in my life <laughs> and uh, as the weeks went on obviously you learnt more and more and more but um, I think it was 13 weeks we did rehearsals and to tell the truth, it was two days before the actual day of the show that I actually learnt my lines. So it was quite a long process for me to get them into my head. But once they came along, it was fine. I've really enjoyed working with the service users of Recovery Air. Um, I think the commitment has been fantastic. Uh, they want to be here, which as a director, just that's 50% of the battle is making sure that they want to be on that stage. Um, They've shown their desire to be here every week and um, their input's been fantastic. Not just for the pantomime itself, it's kind of opened my eyes up as well um, to what these guys do on a regular basis uh, to overcome what they've been through um, in the past and I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed working with every single one of them. I think the service users have flourished throughout this process. At the beginning of the rehearsal process, there was a few people that were a little shy or lacking confidence when they were up on stage. But throughout this process, and with everyone getting behind them and helping them uh, and really being there and supporting um, everything that we do, people have really opened up. Uh, the confidence has really grown. And with that, the creativity grows. And I think that's something that they can take away from this. It's not something that's gonna stop as soon as the final bow is done. I think that this confidence and this learning and this creativity is gonna follow them onto other things in their day-to-day -day life. Chris and Andrew have been here most weeks when we've been um, practicing at the pantomime. And I think it really, we really needed Chris and Andrew here in order to give the service users direction as to what they were going to be doing when it came to actually producing the pantomime. Obviously the other people that have been here um, have got skills in lots of different ways, but the, you know, both Andrew and Chris brought their own um, experience and knowledge about producing something like a pantomime. At the end of the day, I just kind of write the thing, you know, and you rely on directors and producers to turn your, your idea or your vision into, into a reality. And they, they, I think they achieved that admirably. Uh, they've created a rich, broad piece of, 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 of Scottish theatre with this. Um, 
and it comes alive. And we, and we saw that by the, the performances just before Christmas. We, are, we had two packed houses here in Airtown Hall, and the, the people absolutely loved it. So, I mean, that's the, that's the benchmark, I think, for Chris and Andrew's uh, direction and production work, when, you know, you can have a packed house and the public really appreciate and enjoy the thing. So I'm, I'm delighted with the, the work that they did. I would love to see more projects like this in the future. Um, I think it's really helped the guys, as I said before, with their confidence and working as a team as well. And, and they really enjoy it. It gives them something to look forward to as well. It isn't the same old, same old every week. Um, and on a selfish note, I'd love them to do it again because it means I'd get to work with them again. Um, I think they're a great bunch of guys and I'd look forward to working with them if I got the chance again. I hope that the, all of the recovery year activities continue because it's been very, very important to um, maintain the momentum of the people in recovery and the supporters of people in recovery and also um, the staff within the other agencies who we've all worked in partnership together for the recovery year activities. I think having the pantomime has also um, shown me really the great importance that this kind of work has had and the opportunities that it's given to our service users. There's been a lot of positive feedback from everybody involved in the pantomime that this kind of work is invigorating, that it's inspiring, that they're enjoying being creative um, and that it's having a very positive impact on their mental health and their addictions. I think it would uh, encourage other people to come along and, and do panto and plays and stuff that they've never done before because as guys, we've never done anything like this before so I hope it would encourage others to, to give it a shot. I would say, strangely, that it has made me more assertive as a person, you know, having played the part of the deal, you know, like has really, you know, sometimes my family, you know, like, you know, are taken aback, you know, that I could say something in such an assertive way now, you know, because just having been that part and played that part. So on a, a personal level, I would say I find it, you know, really good. Does it matter how you're feeling or... How, ba you know, how bad you're feeling, um, can't get out of the house, things like that. And I think the more support that you get through the likes of the different support groups that have happened, that have came together to get this working, could work with anybody. It's all about just trusting your support workers, getting your confidence built up and participating more and more and more. The more you do it, the more it helps yourself. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but I think it could help anybody in any position. When we had the two performances just before Christmas, uh, the reaction of the audience was 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 just absolutely, you know, a bit brilliant, and uh, you, the look of joy in the performance performers' faces uh, it was absolutely amazing, you know, to, to to see these these folk, you know, carry this off so successfully, you know, it was just a, a an amazing experience for for everybody involved. I found being involved with the production um, a very rewarding and different experience to what we normally go through here at the museum. It's been absolutely fantastic to meet so many people from so many different backgrounds with so many different skills and to see them start off at rehearsal one with initial trepidation to how confident they are now and it's going to be fantastic to see their final overall performance. The Christmas Fair will be a really, really um, exciting day, I think. There's going to be lots on offer for on that day and it's been very well publicised and promoted. So hopefully we'll have service users, people in recovery, supporters of people in recovery. Um, we'll hopefully have staff from all the partnership agencies um, who have been involved in all the recovery activities. We'll have people from the Alcohol and Drug Partnership. We will hopefully as well have people from the general public coming in to um, see the Christmas Fair, to buy products that will be on sale for the Christmas Fair and then we'll hopefully give all of our proceeds and donations will go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. But I think it's really important that the recovery year activities, they are about the service users and they are about future service provision and the direction of which we want to go in and they are about promoting recovery but they're also about trying to reduce the stigma that is attached to mental health and to addiction issues and hopefully by raising the profile of all these positive activities that recovery year can become involved in and plan and develop um, that the general public will also see that as very, very beneficial and hopefully we'll begin to see that people with addictions and people with mental health problems have a very valuable place in society. Yeah.